Hi there, welcome to another video from the Vickers MG Collection and Research Association. This is an of our photo analyses and what we did this month was rather than putting it to a poll we did a shout out to all of our patrons um, to get in touch with some photos they chosen for us that they'd like to understand a little bit more about. And in doing so, what we've um, put together are a few uh, photo analyses now that we'll share over the next few weeks. Um, but please do get in touch if there is a particular photo that interests you and you'd like to understand more. This submission from Richard Roberts was uh, Beach Landing Practice is the caption from the Imperial War Museum. And it shows uh, some men coming ashore from light boats, uh, clearly practicing a beach landing and they're carrying their Vickers machine gun. Um, just to look a little bit more detail about that, we can see it's from the 8th of May 1942 and it was taken by Lieutenant Bainbridge. Um, not the same Bainbridges that run old time design I don't think, but maybe Gary knows whether that was a relative or not. Uh, so what we have is beach landing practice practicing for the real thing, men armed with Tommy guns, so the Thompson submachine guns, and machine guns splash through the foam to gain an advantage point on the beach during the exercise. It's always interesting when we look at these captions to see the terminology used. Clearly the Vickers has not been mentioned here, so it gives us an idea that if we just search for Vickers or Vickers machine guns um, on the Imperial War Museum or in other archives, we very rarely uh, well, we do get some photos, but we very rarely get all the photos um, or all the documents. So you must remember that you have to search machine guns and get, trawl through all the Bren photos, the Lewis, the Browning and everything to find Vickers stuff. But these are definitely Vickers. We can see those in the photos. And of course, it's also the 7th Battalion of the Royal Northumberland Fusiliers uh, training at Greencastle in County Down. Now, the 7th Battalion of the Royal Northumberland Fusiliers were a machine gun battalion. Um, they were, I think, the 59th Infantry Division, uh, if I remember rightly. Uh, we can check that easily, or certainly, uh, probably not in 1942. Again, we can have a quick look and see whether that is the case. Uh, what we can do, let's just show you, is go to the Vickers MG blog. Our website um, it just happens to be called a blog go to British Army so scroll, British uh, service well, come on there we go British service British Army and we'll scroll down to the relevant section and we can see Ronald Thumb Fusiliers there it gives a little bit of a background and then we have to go through all the Great War stuff but we will eventually get to the 7th Battalion and we can see that they were um, in this point here so it tells us who they were with they were the 7th battalion uh to the 59th infantry division there we go okay so they then became a divisional support battalion then back to an mg battalion again and that's what they went to uh france as part of so 59th infantry division and obviously training there in northern ireland um does it say anything sometimes the description adds a little bit different uh information there no it doesn't it's been taken from the negative um and that's what we're getting with IWM photos at the moment. These are you know, taken from the, the scans of the negatives. They're not, uh, what's the word, um, processed photographs. Then you know, they, they haven't been processed, then um, developed. That's the word. They haven't been developed and then scanned. These are just scans of the negatives. So let's get um, our sketching uh, system out and we'll have a look. And let's go for a nice green we can see green so we've got the vickers machine gun up in here Fli uh, fluted barrel casing on there so an earlier gun pre-second world war production uh is quite nice to see that so that's the number two we've got the number one over here with the tripod um we've obviously got section commanders so we've got a, um, a sergeant here a corporal there by the looks of it but armed with a um they're both armed with Thompson submachine guns, and this one also has a pistol. Um, what we then have is uh, another gut tripod over here. Look, so they're obviously coming short as a section, but I don't think I can see the gun um, there at all. Um, can't see who's carrying the gun, but what you also can't so if the this yeah that's the number one there and that's the number two 
you're assuming that these potentially are the um, you know threes and fours, but we can't see any ammunition boxes or liners, possibly because it's an exercise they're not bothering. Um, but you know it would be uh, sensible to, to to have them there anyway. You can see just hanging down here that is the spare parts case being carried by the number two. I can't see anything dangling off of the numbers ones. Um, you would expect to see this dial sight case. Uh, possibly the reason for that is this gun is not fitted with a dial sight bracket actually. Normally you would see that here. So um, it, it, interestingly enough it isn't fitted with a dial sight bracket so they haven't got dial sights. They're probably still using clinometers and bar four sights which means that somewhere on the number two or the number one sorry we should see the bar four sight pouch uh, which is a slightly long pouch with a belt loop and um, You'd see that there. Uh, what we do have though, we can tell on the pouches, is that they are wearing cartridge carriers, which I've talked about in many videos. Um, so they're not wearing universal pouches. They don't have Bren guns. They don't need to carry. Uh, sorry, they're not wear. They're not wearing basic pouches. They don't have Bren guns, so they don't need to carry the magazines for them. Um, we can see the men at the back are carrying their rifles though. And what we, yeah, you know, th this does also confirm again is we are not seeing. Any, I don't think I can see any weapons being carried by the numbers one or number two. They would get in the way. Um, but they are clearly equipped to use rifles if they need to. They're wearing standard British battle dress of the day with uh, um, hobnail boots, anklets, uh, 37 or 40 pattern um, or serge, uh, battle dress serge, trousers, jacket. Uh, blouse and then they've got their small packs and then as is sort of typical of the time they have their gas capes rolled up and on the shoulders there and they're wearing their mark to helmets steel helmets and they've got their um box their chest respirators uh, in their cases in their cases on their chests um this both thompson seem to have the foregrip added to them uh so that you yeah, know that's quite the typical british thing at this point you know we're not just using the stand uh, the um the, the flat floor uh, wooden uh, grip there we're actually using the four grip and we're now using 20 round magazines it is interesting that this individual also has a pistol um holster at least uh it does look like there might not be anything in it the way it's folded who knows um we can't tell uh, but it is interesting to see that he's armed with that and he looks to be uh, the, a corporal, maybe a sergeant, whereas this sergeant doesn't have that or if he does, it's on the other side. Um, so, so, yeah, in, in, interesting there. Now, the tripod is folded in a way that, it, you know, that's not the easiest to carry for any long distance, um, but it does mean that it can be carried and set up quite quickly because you uh, can pivot it on that um on, on the cross head there and throw those legs out in front the, the, you know, these these two the two leg two front legs uh knock those out and throw those in front and set it up quite quickly and the number one will sit down behind it um you can also uh pivot the cross head so that you can carry it over your shoulders so and we might cover that in another video or film uh, or photo at some point um they're coming ashore from two little light boats uh is a little we're not sure at the moment about how the machine guns were taken ashore on the likes of um, Operation Overlord or any other assault landings. Um, there are different ways uh, to take them ashore and we have seen uh, some. Obviously a machine gun is good for consolidating positions but it can't be used until it's set up. So what we uh, see is them sort of coming in the second waves. Uh, of assault not the first waves um, but you know that that varies beach to beach operation to operation so we do have to do a little bit more digging to understand that but this is quite nice to see that they clearly did practice taking the machine guns out of boats and moving them ashore uh, you know, possibly under fire the men seem to be ready uh, to return certainly the, you know, the under the cover of, of, of the men there they seem to return um, so we're saying that the structure of a machine gun uh, machine gun section would have included both a sergeant and a corporal that would be uh, the you know, number one gun or um, you know, th th this could be number one gun and that could be number two gun over here uh, coming ashore from two separate boats that's quite interesting um, clearly you, you can get 
half a section subsection across from either uh so yeah no interesting training photo of what they were up to and what they were practicing in may 1942 thank you for watching please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel please support us on patreon if you're able to and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future i look forward to hearing from you